Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Estudar Direito Pelo Mundo podcast, the podcast that uh, shows you how to study law around the world and how different countries uh, work uh, regarding law school and admissions to become a lawyer. Today, I'll be interviewing Dr. Jordan Dassey, and he's from Albania, and we will be speaking about uh, their law school and how things normally work in his country. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Dassey. Um, we really appreciate it. It's a, gr it's a great honor to host you in the podcast today. And to get our conversation started, I'd like to ask if you could uh, introduce yourself to our listeners. Okay, thank you very much. It is also a great pleasure to be part of your broadcasting. And uh, of course, uh, I will be happy to answer to your question. Basically, I am uh, Jordan Dutz. I'm a professor of law in Albania. But besides that one, I'm also dean of a law school here and also a uh, very active law practitioner in Albania, but not also in Albania, also in Europe, before European Court of Human Rights and other jurisdictions. So basically, I love teaching law. Fantastic. Thank you so much once again for joining us today. Thank you. And my first question to start our topic uh, is, is about law school in Albania, right? So in many countries, law school is undergrad degree. In many, many countries, it's uh, a degree you get after already having a bachelor's degree. How is it in Albania? When do you get your, uh, your law degree? Is it an undergrad right after high school or do you get it later? Uh, well, Albanian uh, higher education system, especially legal education, has undergone through many changes in the last uh, decades. We started with a very traditional way of uh, providing uh, law degrees to our students with four years law degree study course. Uh, this was before the so-called Bologna Declaration process. After the Bologna Declaration, we introduced uh, a bachelor degree of three years, followed by a one-year uh, professional master degree or two years uh, a scientific master or research master, let's say. Uh, but somehow, after testing of several years, now we have another new system, which has uh, an integrated diploma, which is three plus two. So we have a five years law degree, which includes also the master degree uh, as part of the graduation. It means like five years uh, multiply for 60 ACTS uh, or credits. Uh, which allows you to attend any PhD degree after that. Of, of course, once you meet also other criteria, or you can uh, choose to go to the magistrate school, which prepares uh, two uh, categories, prosecutions and judges, which is going to be another three years, but only one year is a full class uh, study. But you can choose also to be a lawyer, which is obligatory that after one year in practice, so once you are graduated, you have to go through one year internship, which is registered internship. Uh, then you have to go to one year full class uh, study at the National School of Advocates. And after that, you are qualified for the bar exam, and if you pass the bar exam, you are licensed as a lawyer. While for going to the magistrate school, you need to have three years of practice as a lawyer or as a legal specialist uh, once you are graduate. Wow, fantastic. That's very This is the, the course, and uh, normally this is how it goes right now in Albania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's uh, that's awesome, especially because so it is a graduate degree now because it includes it includes both bachelor that we used to have and also master degree. Fantastic, fantastic. It's very interesting to hear that because it's uh, it, as we speak to people in different countries, it's all, always interesting to hear what are the differences, of course. But then when you get something that is very different, that's even more amazing. And and I really. I think it, it makes a lot of something, sense. Get... Something very special also we can say is that according to the law, 70% of the curricula is unified over all Albania, regardless of being private or public institution. 
this is because the law somehow needs to be unified course. It doesn't have, I mean, the autonomy of uh, higher education institution can still be respected, but still we need to be sure that lawyers are somehow equally educated somehow. But they have 30% of their courses to define by themselves according to their priorities and also other characteristics. Fantastic, and and that actually led me to would lead me to the the next question. So, uh, once you are in law school, do you have elective disciplines or elective courses you can choose to take? We have or normally all the curriculum is mandatory. We have uh, we have three types. We have obligatory, which is m most of the courses are obligatory. Then we have optional. So we have, let's say, one, two, three, or uh, four courses that you have to pick up one for sure. And you have also elective that you are not obliged, but you can still uh, have some additional credits and courses. This is uh, our system. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and what about uh, a dress code? Do you have any kind of dress code for law school students? Well, we don't have proper dress codes, but we have some dress attitudes, let's say codes in general, which means that students somehow, those are ethics issues. So you can hardly find them in a very detailed written rules, but of course they have to use uh, appropriate uh, dressing. So the, the, the education process will not be somehow jeopardized by Perfect. Uh, this yeah. kind of Perfect, but it, it, it's not like mandatory to wear a suit. For no, example. it is not mandatory, but somehow we all understand what means it is appropriate or not. So it is uh, based on a very general understanding of society on uh, the way how we behave. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about the track to become a lawyer, right? Uh, uh, about uh, finishing law school and then going into to, uh, another year of practice, right? Uh, do, do you have a bar exam in between that or do you go straight uh, from law school into practice? No, once you are graduated, you have to find a lawyer who will, uh, uh, let's say, undertake the responsibility to be your supervisor. He will authorize you to be registered as he or uh, her, as his or her assistant. And then you go to the bar association, you get registered. Uh, you get the assistant lawyer uh, license and then you are allowed to practice for some minor, for example, contraventions, we call them, or torts in some other uh, legal dictionaries. Uh, but with the permission of the lawyer and also once the court allows you, otherwise you are not allowed to represent any client and you can just uh, work under the strict supervision of the lawyer. Uh, that has accepted that duty. After one year, and you have to attend the, the school of the, at the same time, you have to attend the school of National Advocacy School, where you have uh, obligatory courses. And of course, you have lectures like uh, on a regular base. Then uh, you are obliged to be registered for the National Bar Exam. And if you meet the mi minimum, uh, uh, let's say, criteria, or the points, if you reach the minimum uh, fresh of the points, you get licensed as a lawyer in Albania. Fantastic, fantastic. All right. Um, we do I allow also foreign law graduated students to, to uh, participate in our uh, advocacy system. They have to attend also the School of uh, National Advocacy and they have to also to pass the exam. So it means that uh, for those who are coming from abroad before being registered, they need to recognize their diplomas at our Ministry of uh, Higher Education. And after that, they are allowed to be registered and so they can just uh, finish. But they are not allowed to do this in other languages instead of just Albanian language. Do, do universities sometimes uh, in the law school, do they offer any classes that are in English or other languages or are normally all courses in Albanian as well? Now, we do have uh, some universities who use English as a language of instructions. They are private. 
but also in other uh, private institutions or including some few cases in public institutions, they do use English in some uh, courses, but there have been also some attempts to have some uh, English speaking master programs in uh, law school, in public law schools. But so far, I don't think that they have uh, achieved that one because of also the lack of students who have had interest to apply for that course. But somehow also the, the academic staff, I think it's not fully ready in every institution to provide that things, but there are institutions who are able to provide uh, studies in English and also using also uh, literature in English as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, we we just... are a population that we speak many foreign languages and English language is very widely used among academicians. So we have very uh, numerous numbers of academicians and other professionals who speak very well English. So Perfect, that's amazing. It is not a matter of barrier, but it is all a matter of demand and also offer as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, is Albania in uh, a common law country or a civil law country then? No, we are a civil law country. We don't have any fixture of uh, common law. Uh, I would say we are based on Roman and German tradition, having some very original Albanian roots as well. Uh, I can say that, for example, in the entire world, uh, a civil institution of the right to pre-buy something is originally from Illyrians or our dissenters, because uh, of that, uh, Romans, when they occupied Illyria, Illyrians, they could not fully run the country as long as they couldn't have the ownership over the land because Illyrians used to pre-sell the land among each other, not to sell to a third. So this is part of the civil law or every, let's say, civil law in general fixture now that uh, it is the right to pre-buy something. And this is originally from Illyria. From that's Albania. awesome. The interior, guys. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and, and now that you mentioned this very, very specific topic, uh, I know you're very well traveled. And, and I'm wondering if there is any other thing that comes to mind that, that you'd say that's very unique to Albania as far as, uh, you know, legal education or maybe the legal practice goes. Well, German, normally that's the first thing that it came into my mind. Uh, of course, we used to have a very well developed uh, uh, legal tradition before the Ottoman occupation uh, around 13th century when they appeared for the first time in the Balkan Peninsula. And we have been having like Skodra, Duras, or some other cities, medieval cities. They were fully equal, comparable with uh, Monaco, Venice, and other very well-developed uh, medieval cities. But because of Ottoman occupation, this civilization or this tradition stopped from being uh, practiced anymore. And, the situation goes on for 500 for, for 500 years, which uh, we have been under the occupation of Ottoman Empire. Got it, got it. Uh, the, our legal tradition uh, changed and for it remained like this for 500 years. And after the independence that we gained in 1912, Albania started adopting the Western tradition of uh, legal system, ba basically mostly, mostly let's say, based on uh, Swiss, French, German, and Italian tradition. But after 90s, once we got liberated from the communist regime, we have also somehow some common influence from American tradition, in, especially in corporation law, but very few fixtures because it is fully dominated by German model of uh, corporation, corporations. And because of the contracts developments, also we, we, we do apply in many cases also principles of uh, common law contracts. And in many contracts that we sign as a country also with other countries or with foreign elements as a uh, 
conflict of laws refers. We do uh, accept also English law as applicable law in some times, and also we do have arbitration clauses in many of these contracts as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, I think that that covers most of the, the questions I normally ask people from, from all over the world. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jordan, for your time for to speak with us today. And I just would like to really thank you and appreciate you for your time. And um, whenever you you come to Brazil, please make sure to stop by. I'll be happy to visit Albania in the future. So thank you once again. Thank you from your side as well. Let me just add a few things like in a very quick manner, such as since we are part of uh, the European integration system and we expect somehow very soon or maybe a little bit later to be part of a European Union, our legal system, it doesn't differ much from a legal, uh, European legal system because of the so-called process of approximation of legislation with EU. So most of our legislation is under the process of uh, getting approximated with the EU legislation. And this covers most of the fields, including also criminal law. And we are a friendly country towards international law in general, which means that by the, our constitution, international law precedes over our national law in many aspects. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, all foreign awards, court awards, or, uh, uh, let's say, judgments all over the countries, as long as they are delivered by courts which are legally formed and they, independ they are acting in an independent manner and through a very fair process as provided in the European Convention of Human Rights, we do accept them and we uh, enforce them in our country as well. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for adding that. Uh, I feel that that Thank adds you. a lot to, to the understanding. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for listening and tuning into this podcast, and we'll see you in the next episode.